a very good morning students today we are going to start with the next topic of your first chapter and this topic basically refers to a statement which says that scarcity is the undercurrent of economic problem and therefore of economics as we know that why economic problem arises it arises because the resources are scarce and the resources have alternative uses and our wants are unlimited therefore scarcity is the main reason why economic problem arises if there is no scarcity there will be no economic problem and what is economics economics is the study of the economic problem based on the scarcity so if there is no economic problem there will be no need of studying economics therefore we say that scarcity is the undercurrent of economic problem and therefore of economics now firstly i will explain you what economic problem is it is the problem of choice or the problem of allocating scarce resources to alternative uses as we know we if we have the limited resources those resources can also be used for various kind of alternative things so therefore the problem of choice also arises or we can say that the problem of allocating scarce resources for example i have rupees 1000 and also i have various alternative uses of those 1000 rupees i may spend that 1000 rupees on the you can say the eatable items or i can spend those 1000 rupees on my clothes so what is that i have alternative use of my scarce resource that is 1000 rupees and what is alternative uses that is i may spend my resource on either purchasing the clothes or on the eatables so there arises the problem of choice or the problem of allocating those scarce resources and why these problem arises the basic reasons are that the resources are scarce or limited as we know we have the scarce resources no one is having unlimited money or unlimited resources because if there will be no limit on the resources the economic problem will not be there next reason is that the resources have alternative uses because of which the problem of choice occurs and the last one is unlimited wants as we as a consumers have number of wants which we want to satisfy by using these resources so these are the basic three reasons of why the economic problem arises in an economy so if there is no economic problem or no scarcity there will be no study of economics the same the statement says that if there is no scarcity there is no economic problem and there is no economics therefore we say that scarcity is the undercurrent of economic problem and therefore of economics i hope this topic is clear to you clear to all of you next is the three distinct components of economics that is these are the various components on which the study of economics is based on for which you must be very much clear to that the first one is the consumption we have studied this uh, these all components in the previous video also but now we will study in the vast extent the first one is the consumption second one is the production and the third one is the distribution and these are the three components on which your study of economics is based upon so this is very much important concept for the new students of economics now what is consumption activity or the consumption component in this we will study the consumer behavior that is how a consumer behaves in relation to their limited means or limited resources but their wants are unlimited that means if they are given with the resources like suppose i have taken uh, the example of rupees 1000 that is i have limited means but my wants are unlimited i want to purchase many items or i want to fulfill my desire so what will i do this type of question will be covered under the consumer behavior that is how the consumers or how the consumers allocate their given resources if they are given with the resources how they will use or in what uses they will allocate those resources clear 
or we can say that how do they allocate to the purchase of different goods and services or how will they maximize their satisfaction you must know over here that a consumer has the motive to always maximize his satisfaction as we know he is provided with the limited resources but he wants to maximize his satisfaction within those limited resources so we will study that how will he maximize his satisfaction with the limited resources or with the given resources this is known as the consumer behavior which we will study under the consumption now what is consumption theory we are talking over here that we will study about the consumption theory what is that it basically refers to the formulation of set of standard relationships in the further study when we will study that how the consumers are allocating their resources we will get to know about the various relationships between the various variables for example if i will take a common example which you will study under the microeconomics that is when prices decreases the demand of that commodity increases you may take your own example that we as a consumer used to do that if the price of a certain commodity decreases we will demand we will make the demand of that commodity more or we can say when prices increases the demand for that certain commodity decreases which shows that there is inverse relationship between the price and demand which we came to know by studying the consumer behavior that how consumer behaves on the change on the increase or decrease in the prices of a so certain commodity so this was all about your first component that is the consumption here comes the next component of economics that is the production as you know what is production production basically refers to the conversion of the raw materials to the finished goods now in this component we will study the producers behavior like in the consumption we studied about the consumers behavior that how consumers responds to the allocation of resources basically allocation of the limited resources now here we will study that the producers have limited means or the limited resources and they also have the alternative use like they also have the choice of choosing any product rather than the another one but how they will think like which product to choose basically their motive is to minimize the cost of production and maximize the revenue so that their profits may maximize now over here you must know the difference between the revenue and profits basically revenue refers to the sale receipts for example i as a shopkeeper has sold uh, 10 units for rupees 100 clear so when i will get rupees 100 that will be revenue for me but by selling those units i must also have incurred some cost in that for example if I, if i have got rupees 100 by selling any certain commodity and the cost on selling that commodity was rupees 50 clear so how i will calculate the profit the profit will be calculated by subtracting the cost of production from the revenue that is by subtracting 50 rupees from 100 rupees so rupees 50 is my profit over here so this is the difference between the revenue and the profit profit basically refers to when we subtract our revenue from the cost and revenue refers to the sale receipts or the money which a shopkeeper or any seller gets by selling any commodity so the main motive of the producers is to minimize the cost is to minimize the cost and maximize the revenue because of which the profit will be maximized and as we studied in the consumption the main motive of the consumers is to maximize their satisfaction by spending their scarce resources among the alternative uses and that of the producers is to maximize their profit which they can maximize by increasing their revenue and decreasing or minimizing their cost so what is production theory over here we can say that formulation of set of standard relationships explaining producers behavior what we studied under, under the consumption theory it was the formulation of set of standard relationships which will explain the consumers behavior and under the production theory it will explain the 
producers behavior that how producers behave in relation to their limited means and alternative uses we can also say that if i have if i as a producer have a choice of producing either the leather jackets or the denim jackets what i will think i will think that by producing which good or which jacket my cost will be minimized and my profits will be maximized so on the basis of that my principles will be set up now for example if we think about a producer a producer will definitely increase his supply if the price of a certain commodity increases therefore a set of standard relationship is said that when prices increase the supply by the producers also increase because their motive is to maximize the profit and similarly if the prices decrease the supply will decrease so we will come to know that there is positive relationship between the price of a commodity and the supply of a commodity if we think from the viewpoint of the producers so this was all about your second component that is the production now comes the next component of economics that is the distribution before studying this you must know about the agents of production or the factors of production if we think about the producers for producing various finished products they need some kind of inputs or the factors with the help of which they will carry on the production activity so you must know that there are basically four types of agents of production or the factors of production the first one is the land then labor capital and entrepreneur basically the land is used by the producer for carrying out the production activity in return of which the land owners are provided with the rent next comes the labor the labor services are taken by the producers and in return of that they are provided with the wages next comes the capital capital may be in the form of money which are provided with the interest in return of the money they are providing to the production unit and the last factor of production is entrepreneur basically entrepreneur is the one who takes the initiative for the start up of any business or the idea of business comes in the mind of the entrepreneur in return of which he is provided with the profits clear you must be very much clear with this concept factors of production because this you will study in your 12th standard also that what are the factors of production basically there are four factors of production that is land labor capital and entrepreneurship with the help of which the producers perform the production activity and these factors of production are provided by the household sector or the consumers and in return of which the pro producers will give rent wages interest and profit to the household sector therefore under the third component of economics that is distribution the distribution basically refers to the distribution of income among agents of production now from this you will come to know that how producer sector household sector is related to each other the income which is generated by the producer sector they will distribute it among the agents of production which are also called the factors of production or its owners and as i have already explained you what is the what are the factors of production there are four factors of production land labor capital and entrepreneur in return of providing the factor services they are given with the factor payments which include rent wages interest and profit now on the basis of this you must be clear that what do you mean by distribution theory now distribution theory means that how income is distributed among the owners of the factors of production that is like we are providing the rent to the land owners we are providing the wages to the labor we are providing the interest to the capital providers and we are providing with the profit to the entrepreneurs so this is the distribution theory that how we are distributing the income to the factors of production basically this income is distributed by the production sector to the household sector because household sector provides with the factor services to the producer sector with the help of which they will do their production activity otherwise the production activity is not possible without these factors of production 
now next comes the difference between what is microeconomics and what is macroeconomics you must know that the micro term relates to the small and macro term relates to the large so if we talk about the microeconomics it is it deals with the economic problem that is whenever we study the economic problem related to the microeconomic units which involves the household firm or an industry but on the other hand what is macroeconomics it deals basically with the economic problems at the level of an economy as a whole so therefore if we talk about the individual demand that we as an individual is demanding how much at a certain price that will come under the microeconomics on the other hand if we talk about the economic problem of the whole economy that is if we talk about the poverty situation of a country if we talk about the gross domestic product product or gdp of a country if we talk about the employment situation of a country all that will come under the macroeconomics this was just an introduction to what is microeconomics and macroeconomics you need not study that much in detail because we will study this in your another book that is microeconomics but you must know that economics has two branches of study that is the microeconomics and macroeconomics where microeconomics studies the economic problems based on the household firm or an industry or at the individual level on the other hand the macroeconomics basically deals with the economic problems at the level of an economy as a whole so when we talk about the economic problems of the whole economy that comes under the macroeconomics clear so this was all about today's video i hope that all of you are clear with the concept i have explained today thank you so much